In this video, I want to talk about the state of 3D uh, movies, the state of 3D entertainment in 2024. What's going on with it? Do I think that there's going to be a future in 3D going forward? I made a video a while back about the, my new projector that I bought, the Epson 6050UB, which I bought, actually bought, bought used. And uh, one of the main reasons why I decided to buy that particular projector was the fact that it supported 3D. Going back to the beginning of my home theater uh, journey, which started around 10, 15 years ago, I've always had some sort of home theater and I've always been interested in 3D. I remember having I bought a, a Mitsubishi DLP television. I actually made a, made a video about this. Uh, one of the earlier videos on my channel that covers that TV. I remember playing PlayStation 3 games. The PlayStation 3 actually supported 3D back in the day. Uh, currently, there are no gaming systems that support 3D. 3D support on computers is spotty at best. I don't think there are a lot of games that even support it anymore. 3D has become relegated more to like the movie side of things. As far as the state of movies are for 3D, releases have been very thin. I believe last year, I went on Wikipedia and I looked for like 3D movies released in 2023 and there were 15. I mean, there's never been a ton of releases in 3D. Not every movie gets released in 3D because it costs mo extra money. First of all, you need specialized equipment. The equipment that only like uh, uh, James Cameron uses, the specialty like uh, dual, uh, dual lens camera system. Most uh, pr movie productions actually do a uh, conversion using you know software or computers actually do the conversion most 3d movies are, sh are produced in that manner you have to go back to like 2019 which was the year before the pandemic started to see like a, ma a like a massive increase in the amount of 3d releases and now and since 2019 the number has just gone down pretty much every year next year i believe i checked the wikipedia page I think there's only there's only like eight or nine 3d movies slated for release next year. I don't know if more will be added to the list later in the year, but so far, according to this one particular list that I found, there's only like eight or nine movies slated for release. So this is a this is a dying format. You know, it's a format that I personally took for granted, and now that I have my yes, it's a little quirky the fact that you have to use like specialty glasses to watch your movies. The truth is, it it's a really it's really cool. It's really cool technology that we probably all overlooked, and now. You know, if you don't appreciate it, something, it gets taken away. Now I want to discuss the state of like, of uh, 3D home releases. And as you all may know, Avatar The Way of Water was the last 3D movie that was released in the United States. Before that, I believe it was Dune uh, Part 1 was the last one. Most of the 3D movies that you can that you can buy weren't even released in the United States. You could actually buy this is uh this is Frozen 2. This is not a United States release. I got Avengers Infinity War also United States release. You can set, you can tell that by these logos here on the corner. Again, Avenger, Avengers Infinity War released in 3D but not in the United States. And I got Onward here. Great movie, by the way, underrated in my opinion. Uh, also, not released in the United States. So, the 3D Blu-ray market is probably dying, or it's probably dead, or it's on life support at best. My goal for my personal collection is to, I want to accumulate as many 3D movies as I can before the format fully disappears, because it, it is, I've really gotten back into it, and especially with the size of the screen, 165 inch screen, it is, incredible. The fact that I didn't embrace it as much as I am embracing it now in the past, I'm kind of like kicking myself for not getting into it a little more. Even though, you know, I feel like 3D is, a, is has a bigger impact the bigger the screen you go. That's why it's really cool when you go to a movie theater and you have, you know, the massive, you know, 30 foot screen or whatever, or however big it is, you know, 50 foot screen. And, you know, 3D movies have always been held as like a premium theater experience. And I, I think that's probably accurate. Every time I did go to a movie, I never left the movie theater disappointed in any way. Even by the fact that I had to pay like 10 more dollars to see the movie, I always felt that 3D movies did add something. As far as home entertainment gimmicks, I believe HDR is a much bigger gimmick than 3D ever was. The downside to 3D was the fact that you had to wear glasses. Some of these glasses were active and, and if they were passive glasses, they were basically cutting your resolution in half, which was corrected by later TVs that were actually 4K. So when you were cutting 
the resolution of a 4K TV set in half, it ended up being a t it would end up being like a full full HD experience, similar to what I can get on my on my projector. I want to talk about what you need to watch a 3D movie. First of all, you need a 3D some kind of source. So you need a 3D Blu-ray. Voodoo might have offered them at some point. I never tried them though. Um, I believe they do offer 3D, but I never, again, never did it. I always, I always went through the 3D Blu-ray. You're gonna need some kind of device, some kind of display that that uh, that can display 3D. These days, it's either some kind of VR headset or a projector. You cannot buy televisions anymore that do 3D. It's just you just it just doesn't exist. They just don't make that anymore. 4K and HDR have taken over, and uh, Blu-ray 3D is you know as far as t uh, television manufacturers are concerned, is 3D Blu-ray is dead. Even though there's the occasional new release like uh, Avatar: The Way of Water, it's essentially a dead format. Let me show you what you need, what I'm using right now for th for watching 3D movies. So this is my rack closet right now. And I'm going, I will be making a full video where I talk about, you know, what we changed uh, because you used to be able to access the racks, the rack closet from behind, from within the theater. And now it's like, a, it's a closet with it that's located in our rec room here. This is my equipment rack. Um, to watch 3D, I use my Anthem AVM 78K um, processor, obviously my uh, Emotiva amps as well. Since the 3D standard was uh, was made available since uh, HDMI 1.4, I can't tell you this for sure, but I'm about 99.9% 99 .9 sure that any receiver, that, that, that any HDMI 2.0 receiver will be able to handle a, uh, a 3D signal, which would include all these three receivers, but obviously they're not connected to, any, to a 3D display of any kind because they stopped making those a long time ago. Um, I think, I don't know, 2018, 2017, around then. The only way to get 3D these days is through like a, through a 3D headset, or like a VR headset, or through a projector. That's if you wanna get something with 3D. So how do I play back 3D? I use my Zaidu. This plays back uh, 3D files, and I use my Panasonic uh, Blu-ray player here. Um, which can also play back 3D Blu-rays. I've got another Zaidu here. I'm gonna do another video about this soon, but I just wanted to make this video about 3D now. Um, so that, you know, because I feel like this is something that I need to talk about. Another thing you're gonna need are, are, uh, are 3D glasses. So as far as 3D glasses, the, the, this is a set of the Epson uh, 3D glasses that came with my uh, old um, 5030 UB, I actually kept them. One of the goals for my theater, for this current theater, is I wanted to have, have a pair of glasses for every seat. That means I wanted to have at least 10 pairs of 3D glasses so that if I ever happened to have 10 people in this theater and we were all watching a 3D movie, everybody could enjoy the movie. So that may, led me down the rabbit hole to try to find uh, some Epson 3D glasses since you cannot actually buy these anymore. So if you actually want to go through the rabbit hole of trying to find these Epson 3D glasses. You're gonna look for model ELPGS03. I already had two pairs, so I had one pair that I literally never used. It was in the box. I believe this is the box it was that it came in, and I literally never used it because I've only I was the only watch. Uh, I was the only person that ever watched a 3D movie in my old theater, so I'm, I only opened one pair of 3D glasses. So I opened the other one. It doesn't work. Turns out I the battery was bad because when I plugged it into the USB cord directly it would function. I found some videos online that showed you had to actually solder on a new battery onto it, which actually fixed the problem. I can put in some information on where I, on where I found some, where if you actually wanna go through that, I found the batteries that you need, and I also found like, a, I'll put a link of, the, of a good video that I follow that, that'll teach you how to actually solder on a new battery into these and how to open them up. It's not too bad. I ended up fixing three pairs of these things in all. I got to the point where I could fix one of them in maybe 30 minutes or so. 
Um, 30 minutes, so you dismantle it, solder on a new battery, and put it back together, and it works okay. And then you charge it, and it, it works as intended. If you don't want to go through that, and I honestly, I wouldn't recommend that you go through the uh, the hassle of trying to find uh, trying to find old, you know, old, you know, used uh, 3D glasses, even though they are the ones that are meant to go with the my particular projector. Uh, pretty much any RF, uh, if it's an RF 3D glasses, they should work. You have to look for that keyword. Keyword is RF. If it doesn't say RF, it's probably not gonna work. And don't even try passive ones. They don't work with projectors. They all have to be active. And if they're active, they're probably RF. Another option on Amazon, they sell these. These are made by Alec Live. Uh, I'll, put a uh, uh, I'll put a link in the description. These work just fine. Uh, they're about $30, so you can buy a four pack of these. Not sponsored, by the way, I just happen to find these. You can buy a four pack of these things for about 120 bucks and th $30 each. It which is actually cheaper than me buying used ones on eBay, used Epson ones on eBay. And you don't have to go through the hassle of trying to find batteries and soldering, uh, you know, soldering old, bat, you know, uh, new batteries onto these things. This stuff is very small. We're talking about a battery about the, smaller than a postage stamp that to fit in the, inside these glasses. So it's not an easy process. So if I were you and, you don't, if you and you're looking into getting to 3D and you happen to have a 3D projector, just go ahead and buy these glasses if you don't have any, they work okay. The only difference that I've seen so far, as far as performance, they perform exactly the same. The only difference is the, the Epson glasses. The Epson glasses that will actually tell you the percentage of the battery that's left, these, no, they, they don't tell you that information on when you, when you pair them to your uh, projector. Pretty much the only difference, I guess, when they're when they're dead, when they die, just charge them again. You know, these, you know, maybe a little better, but uh, as far as comfort, they're they're comparable. I would say the Epson ones are a little more comfortable. Um, they have a bigger like uh, uh, they have a bigger like rubber tip, uh, rubber nose bridge, you know, uh, pad, uh, and it, it's it's uh, they're I would say they are more comfortable. The Epson ones, just just get these. It's a lot easier. As far as performance is concerned with my particular projector, I have it set to zero right in the middle when I'm watching a normal like 3D movie, like one from a disc or one from my Zidu. Um, I have it set to the, you know, because you, you can actually set the, the 3D effect. There's like a slider within the GUI of the, of the menu and I have it set to zero. And I think, uh, you know, minim that sort of minimizes the ghosting you get because when there's like, in some scenes when there's like extreme levels of depth provide uh, shown to you on screen you can see some there's a lot you can see some ghosting especially in dark scenes that's something i sort of had to get used to i don't remember that being the case for my 5030 ub but in this particular projector i've noticed a little more ghosting that i you know than than i would recall from the 5030 but then again i didn't watch that much 3d content on that one it was like once in a blue moon kind of thing in this theater i've really been watching a lot more 3d stuff Okay, so the first thing you're going to need to do is uh, you're going to need to get software called Make a Make MKV. I mean, there's two ways you can use Make MKV or DVD Fab. Make MKV is Make MKV, and then you're going to download the software. I don't think this is much of a gray area. This is uh, you you would literally be copying these discs and I don't want to get into the whole piracy thing. My rule of thumb is if you you're copying your own disc, I think that's sort of a semi gray area. I, you know, you could make the argument that you're just making a you're making a copy of the disc that you already own and to put it on your network so you don't have to keep accessing the disc and to play the movie every time. Theoretically, once you acquire the disc, you're, it's like fair game, you know, you can you can just and however you acquire the disc, you can use MKV. So I just opened up KV and I already put the disc in. You can use MKV to to do this. So, you know, you could theoretically rent a disc and do the same thing. But this is a, this is my own copy of Avengers Infinity War that I bought. So you're just gonna open the disc like I did. I don't do ISOs. If you wanna do ISOs, you're looking at the wrong video. I don't I do not do that. You know, the way I see it when I'm using like a front end like as I do or something or, or Plex to watch these, there's already like a, a front end of the movie. I just use I do to play the, play the movie. I don't need to have all the extra features and stuff. If I wanna have all the extra features, I'll actually put the disc in the, in the Blu-ray player. Obviously, this is the, this would be the full movie. So you're gonna, 
you're gonna drop this down. I usually unselect all of this by right clicking and then you're gonna wanna select this thing that says stereo. This is like the second uh, movie file because these these 3D movies are basically like two movie files embedded into one file. So this would be like the secondary movie file that you need for one for each eye. So you're gonna select this one and that one and then you're gonna select the best audio. So you go with DTS A HD. You can you could do DTS if you want. It's like but I usually get this one and then I usually select the English subtitles. But, you know, if you're from another region, just select your, the subtitle that, that you can understand the best. And then you're just going to save it. I, I save it to a folder called, you can't see it too well, but it's called Blu-ray 3D. And then that's it. Then you just hit make, it, make MKV. And it's that simple. When you finish copying the disk, it's going to come up with a file name that looks like this. But I'm going to show you what you have to do to rename it so that uh, Zaidu can... Uh, find the movie and uh, index it or so that Zaidu can scrape the movie or, or index it so in a format that it can recognize so just search for Avengers Infinity War and I just take I just copy and paste the IMDB uh, title so you go in here and do that and then you're going to want to then you're going to put a period dot 3d dot mvc and then hit enter mvc is is, is called multi-view video encoding this is the way that uh, 3d blu-rays are encoded this is gives you uh you know if you want to look it up i can i will uh i can put a link in the description so yeah this is multi-view encoding this is just the way that uh, blu-ray 3d blu-rays are encoded it, it embeds the two video files for each eye into one file basically and this is the way so again and then you're just going to drag and drop it into your drive so this is where i keep all my 3d movies so i would probably put it in my action adventure file which i already have so it's already in there and uh, so you just drag it and drop and then I'll take you to the Zaidu in a moment after I show you one more method to get uh, 3D content. So another method to have 3D content is to either one, use your projector if, if it already has like an auto automatic conversion feature. So in, a, so in other words, you can take any 2D content and convert it into 3D. Um, I, my old projector, my uh, 5030 UB actually had this. I didn't use it very much because it was just sort of okay. Uh, but uh, if, if you, my current projector, the 6050 UB does not have that. So you have to kind of do your own things. What I'm trying to get to is that you can actually make your own 3D content. So this is an example and I'll show you how to do this in a sec. As you can see, this is called side-by-side -side video and it's sort of improved a lot as I made this for my kids. So let me just pause that there. So one of the downsides of side by side in the past was the fact that you were that it was you were basically essentially if you were doing side by side content and encoding it to 1080p, you were basically dividing the resolution into two because it would actually be taking up ultimately it would create like a 720p like quality uh, video, which isn't which is kind of soft. It's very it's not as good, but now. As you can see, if you could look here, I encoded this at 4K. So I was bas I basically took the 1080p video for for this movie, and doing side by side video in 4K kind of solves the whole resolution problem. Making it as sharp as like uh, as a 3D Blu-ray, which is a 10 which is 1080p because it's using the multi-view video encoding, which I just showed you. Which is basically giving a few. It's giving you. It's giving 1080p per eye. So this is giving actually more than 1080p per eye. So let's open up. I'm gonna open up DVD, DVD Fab version 13, which is the newest one. So you can go, to go ahead and download that. Uh, this is this is paid. This isn't free. This isn't like MKV. So you're gonna have to. You would have to go and download and pay for the creator. Here, I'll just show you what you get, you would need to get. So I actually bought like I bought like the full package license pretty recently. So you you need to go to the converter and now. 
So you need to buy the converter one, whatever that is. I don't know exactly what that is, just buy it. But now it, they actually spit, spun it off into this thing called Unifab. So it'll just prompt you to start Unifab, which is a completely different software that you have to, that it downloads. And as you can see, I have, I don't have all the things you can do, but I have, I have uh, this thing called, you need to, this is what you need to get, video converter. That's what I have, see it's activated. So what you do is you find, you're gonna add a video. So in this case, let me just find any video here. Here, we'll do Black Adam. And it's just gonna open the Black Adam MKV, which I copied already. And then you're going to select format. I usually do MKV and you're gonna select this 3D side by side format. Here again, MKV 3D side by side, and then you're gonna to go to settings, change the resolution to 4K, which is 3840 by 2160, and then it'll and set it to high bit rate up here, and that'll this is a pretty good bit rate. You can go you can even go a little higher. Select audio pass through if you want to keep the highest audio. I've just been setting this all the way up to the highest, and you're just going to keep this at split screen. Basically, it's just cutting the video right in half, like I showed you earlier with the Super Mario Brother copy and then hit OK and then you're just gonna hit start and this will essentially make one of those side-by-side -side video side-by-side uh, -side files that I just showed you and it will it takes about an maybe on my computer takes about an hour to do a whole movie and uh, and I have a pretty big I have a pretty good computer I have a Ryzen 5950X 16 core CPU and, and again it's leveraging the GPU a lot but I have a 2080 an RTX 2080 and an RTX 3060 in this computer so I've been playing around with this Unify software and it, there it, it can be a little buggy and I've discovered that sometimes uh, depending on the profile you select when I actually watched this uh, this uh, Black Adam video that I made when I played it it was like all like squished in the middle here, so that's not, you don't want that, you want it to fill the entire screen. So what I found was that if you select the format, you change it over to MP4 and do the same three, uh, 3D side by side. Again, MP4, 3D side by side, select that, and then you go to settings and then do the exact same thing, go to 4K, um, do the bitrate high all the way up select pass through and then up the game up the game and up the visual depth there and um, another good thing you can do is just just generate a sample before you even like render the thing because you know then you're wasting a whole hour rendering um, and then that kind of it'll show you whether it came out right and here here's just clear close as you can see, it's filling up the entire screen. Then that's what that's how you, that's what you want to see. So, but yeah, that's a little tip there. So as far as resolution is concerned, when you generate a side by side video in 4K, the output resolution that you're going to get per eye is essentially higher than 10 than a 1080p than a 3D Blu-ray, which uses MVC encoding. You're going to get 1920 by 2160 essentially per eye, which is better than 1920 by 1080 by, by about 50 percent i'm starting from 1080p video because you need to consider in the home 3d market home video 3d market there was never any 3d in hdr so you have to start from s from an sdr standpoint so i'm, I'm using a normal 1080p blu-ray file it's sort of a trade-off but at the same time you're going to get essentially you're essentially getting the same same or similar quality that you'd be getting on a th commercial 3D Blu-ray, but of course, when you're generating your own 3D, it's just not gonna be as good. But I guess it's better than nothing and you do get some a pretty decent depth effect. So you can see deep, it almost looks like you're looking, into, uh, looking at a window in a room, but you're not getting anything popping out into the screen like you would in a, on a, like on a more commercial Blu uh, 3D Blu-ray. And before I forget, uh, when you actually produce your own 3D video, you have to 
you name it dot you name it the name of the video you find it on IMDb then you add dot 3d dot SBS SBS means side by side and it tells you to do it's a 3d video so I'm in my Zaidu right now and I'm gonna show you my 3d collection I'm just gonna concentrate on 3d for this video is this is what I'm talking about so there I have I have it, uh, I have my own 3D categories. I'm gonna hit 3D. And these are all my 3D movies. So I'm gonna show you. So this is the Super Mario Brother movie that I made that's side by side. First of all, I wanna temper your expectations. This is not gonna be nearly as good as a, as a uh, commercially produced 3D movie that was done. I don't even know how they do it, but the, the 3D effect, it, they, they, it can vary between scenes right it's not like a con the, the the 3d video that i can make is like a constant level of 3d it's not like it doesn't vary scene by scene or moment by moment or character by character they can like the, the commercial 3ds uh video they can just they can focus they can make one character pop out more than another and put more more stuff in the foreground more stuff in the background and like make things pop a little more. But uh, the stuff that I can do, it's more like, uh, it's it sort of creates depth. So you're like looking into the scene and you see depth versus anything popping out of the screen, like in a normal 3D movie. This is more like you're looking into like a, 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 a and you're looking through a window, let's say, and you can see depth, but that's pretty much it. That's the limitation. So it's gonna show up as 3D, as you can see, it's 4K, it says 4K and 3D. Um, so let's, uh, I'll show you what it looks like. Obviously you're not gonna be able to see the 3D effect like I will be able to see it. But as you can see, you can see that it was like two screen, it was like divided in half and then my projector is gonna stitch it. My projector will stitch it up together now. See, it looks, it's gonna look a little weird, a uh, little weird. But you know, one thing I've I've done some experimenting with uh, with side by side. Here, let me pause this before it gets copyrighted. So go into uh, the, I have a three I have a, an Epson sixty fifty, and I've done a little experimenting. I th and I I've landed on that the best the best setting, which doesn't create a bunch of ghosting, is negative one. You get you get a pretty good depth effect of, for the video, but at the same, and it does create a little bit of ghosting, uh, but it it is somewhat of a believable like it looks like you're looking into the room, and it looks you know half decent. Again, not as good as a normal uh, as a commercially available like 3D Blu-ray, but it's you know for something you make in your own home, it's not so bad using your own computer. It's okay. I would say it's sort of comparable to what I remember the old my old projector doing, which I sort of took for granted. I didn't ever use I didn't use that uh, that nearly as much. I'm sort of getting back into 3D right now uh, since I have such a big screen. But you know, I'll let it play for a second, and you can see you probably see the 3D effect, like how it's like how. It looks sort of out of focus. It looks kind of weird. It looks like it's projecting two screens at the same time. So there's that. And now I'll show you, uh, I'll kind of like briefly play like a normal 3D video. For the side-by-side, -side, I would recommend doing that negative one. Uh, here, I'll have to start another video to do that, but I have Avengers Endgame and I, I was watching that and it was uh, on 3D. Here, we'll go over here. I was watching that last night on 3D. I've been really enjoying 3D these last couple of weeks and just kind of figuring out a way to like, how do, how do I keep 3D going? Because they're not coming out with new discs. So it takes a second to load. So again, uh, for like normal 3D content, I would just go to 3D setup and, and set the 3D depth you can, I just hit the default button, it actually looks better that way. I would just keep it at default at positive two. Um, so yeah, it, uh, 3D, that's how Zidu works. Uh, 
Again, I'm only talking about Zidu in this video. I don't know about any other way to play these uh, these files. Uh, Zidu does a really good job, and I think uh, and it's uh, relatively inexpensive. I don't want to end this video on like on a down note, talking about the doom and gloom of the format. You know, I think there's a little bit of hope. The format is definitely on life support. They're about to pull the plug on the thing. It's yeah, this it's bad. But there's a little bit of hope, and then in the form of James Cameron, number one. Three D, I think, was perceived as a risk in two thousand and nine. Yeah. And it's sort of come back around to being perceived as a risk again now because it's sort of fallen out of favor. I think. Is that really true, though? I mean, if if you think about the way it worked back then. It was a novelty. At the time, we had 6,000 screens worldwide that were 3D screens, digital. Now we have 120,000. Now most big blockbuster movies are made in 3D, so people have a choice. If they like it, they can see it in 3D. If they don't like it, they can see it in 2D. Avatar The Way of Water did really well in the box office. That means he's going to make another one, or maybe two or three more of these things. So at the very least, we're going to have, and I know that James Cameron, he's committed to the format, and he's going to release stuff in 3D. And hopefully they feel, you know, they eventually get the uh, 3D Blu-ray releases. So yeah, so we got James Cameron on our court. He's gonna he's gonna push the format uh, as much as he possibly can. The second biggest development right now, I think, would be like the fact that you know we got the Apple Vision Pro. When Apple gets behind something, it's typically they are the biggest juggernaut in tech. In tech. Between Disney Plus and Apple TV Plus, they've been they have added support for you know over a hundred 3D movies that you can watch. And apparently, you know, from what I've heard. It's some of the best 3D that anybody's ever seen, given the, the, the high definition and the high resolution of each little, of the micro OLED panels for each eye, they're just, you know, people are just raving about this thing and how incredible it is with 3D movies. So it may not change the fact that the 3D Blu-ray format is going to die or is dead, or I don't think it's gonna bring it back from the dead. It could come to the point where more streaming services like Disney Plus or Apple TV Plus will start offering 3D content to be viewed on a more traditional setup like a projector. If I had to bet on it, I would say that's not gonna happen, but who knows? If, if the Apple Vision Plus comes out, they keep pushing this tech, they come up with a cheaper headset that isn't $3,500, maybe one that's $1,000, that would be a big deal. I think that it might actually push the needle more towards our favor to get a lot more movies. I would like to say that, that the future is bright for, the th for 3D, but all the signs point to it being almost over. I don't think 3D is gonna completely disappear. I think there will still be some movies that are pushed out in 3D theatrically that aren't like James Cameron movies. Maybe not all the biggest movies will be like, uh, will have a 3D version, but you know, some, maybe the bigger ones in 3D Blu-ray. You know, there's hundreds of titles available on, on, on Blu-ray that you can still buy and or you can also rent them on like uh, 3dblu-ray.com. You can also make your own 3D, like I mentioned. Again, not as good, but uh, it's uh, definitely something that you can look into if you feel that you want to actually, uh, if there's a particular movie that you think should, should have should have a 3D version and you want to see some depth, you can definitely uh, try that out and see if you like it. I really hope this helped you out. I tried to make this video as comprehensive as possible to try to help anybody who's kind of been on the fence about 3D or you never really tried it out. Who knows, you might even have a projector or TV that, that supports it and you don't even know about it. Just trying to spread the word that 3D is still kind of cool. You know, and it's something that we, we're probably gonna lose and probably something that we, we probably have lost it's funny how that works, like you, 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 you don't appreciate something until it's gone, right? You know, it's just funny how like, uh, you know, these things work. But anyway, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. It really helps a lot if you can like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.